The Dead Space remake has quickly cemented itself as one of the best of its kind to date. Motive Studios has done an outstanding job of preserving the original experience, while at the same time modernising it and giving longtime fans a fresh way to experience one of the best survival horror games ever made. What's so remarkable about this remake is that it doesn't reimagine the original. It builds on the template established in the first game. What makes this even more impressive is that the remake doesn't use the original game's source code. Everything was rebuilt from the ground up in an entirely different engine. The fact that it looks and plays like the original, albeit a more responsive and visually impressive version, is a real achievement. Although this remake stays very faithful to the 2008 game, just about every area has seen some form of improvement, and this includes the game's many interfaces. The original game has become synonymous with the term diegetic UI for its lack of a conventional HUD, instead opting to integrate things like the health bar and ammo counters into the game world. It still has traditional menus such as the inventory and store, although these don't occupy the entire screen. And with the exception of the front-end menus, the interfaces in Dead Space are baked into the game world, and in the case of the inventory, need to be operated in real time. So in this analysis, I'm going to take a look at how Motive Studios have updated and improved the various interfaces throughout the game, without completely changing the look and feel of the original. One of the key pillars of the original game's design philosophy was immersion. The goal was to keep the player in the world with as little distraction as possible. This approach isn't ideal for every game, but for experiences that focus on atmosphere and narrative, it can remove the fourth wall, or in this case the invisible safety glass between the player and what's happening. One way this was achieved was by using a diegetic approach for the interface design. For a game like Dead Space, where being immersed in the atmosphere is an essential part of the experience, using a diegetic approach was an excellent way to keep the player in the world and maintain a constant level of tension. The term diegetic means occurring within the context of the story. It means it exists for the characters in the story, it's part of their world and something that they're aware of. When talking about game interfaces, diegetic UIs are commonly thought of being objects that appear inside the game world. Take the GoldenEye pause menu for example. This menu's design isn't anything special, except for the way that it's presented. Hitting the start button makes James pull up his wristwatch, and the menu is presented as part of the wristwatch's display. This is a clever way of linking the game world to what could have easily been a boring menu. Although the menu isn't technically part of the game world, the way that it's presented makes it seem like it is in a way that's believable within the context of the James Bond universe, further selling you on the idea that you are James Bond. What makes the diegetic approach so effective is how it enhances the storytelling. You're not just taking a time out to look at a menu, you're engaging with something that the characters in the game world would actually do, and by not breaking the fourth wall the experience becomes more immersive. Dead Space's interface design achieves this in a really creative way. In the original game, the ship that you're on, the Ishimura, was designed as a character, and the UI was supposed to be its voice. Interfaces were deliberately designed to feel broken and glitchy, almost as if the ship itself was infected by the marker. This acts as a kind of visual language, and it's used throughout the game to communicate your level of safety. Rooms filled with red and or orange interfaces feel aggressive and unwelcoming, as if the ship were telling you to get out whereas rooms filled with blue UIs feel inviting and safe. The diegetic approach isn't a simple and instant win though. It presents some big design and usability challenges, especially when talking about accessibility. Now, before we talk about specific UI elements, I want to discuss color. Color in the original game was designed to communicate various UI states. White and blue means that the UI is interactive, red means it's locked or not currently interactive, and orange means that it's never interactive, in other words it's window dressing. This is a clever system, although it isn't terribly accessible. For people with color blindness, reds and oranges can appear as mustard colors and would blend into each other, making it hard to distinguish between locked UIs and window dressing. These colors also don't have much contrast, meaning that they might not stand out and could lose their meaning. Take the door hologram for example. At a distance, where you can't make out the label, it would be difficult to tell if the door was locked or if it was simply a non-interactive element. It may not even stand out enough to be seen as something of interest, and this would be hugely frustrating if you were in need of a quick exit. The remake addresses this in two ways. The first is the design of the hologram. The label is larger, has more contrast, and includes an icon indicating what button or key to press to open it. The fact that the game is rendered at a higher resolution and is likely to be viewed on a high resolution display also makes these holograms easier to see. The second improvement is the inclusion of various colorblind settings. 
This uses alternate colors for people that can't see much difference between certain colors. This is a marked improvement over the original, although I think it could be taken further still. Interactive elements, such as the door holograms, could have unique designs to help players distinguish between the various states of interactivity. This would be particularly useful at long distances where the label can't be read. The colorblind options are undoubtedly a huge win for people with colorblindness, but they don't take players with low vision into consideration, so more diverse hologram designs would mitigate this issue. Generally though, the color system has been successfully enhanced, with more contrast and the accessibility options provide a superior and more inclusive experience. So let's move on and take a look at the rig's holographic display. This is the most frequently used interface in the game. You rely on it for a number of things, to manage resources, view mission objectives, read logs, and to see where you are. It even lets you remap your buttons on the fly by allowing you to choose what weapons you have equipped and which buttons they're assigned to. The remake rethinks this UI in a lot of ways, but it's ultimately still very similar in appearance and operation. The inventory allows the player to quickly use or assign resources. This screen has been cleaned up substantially and is arguably the most usable that this UI has ever been. Previously, a lot of space was reserved for information that had no immediate value. Displaying the level of the suit, how many credits you have, or showing six slots for key items doesn't make managing resources easier. Reducing how prominent this information is and hiding the key items allows this screen to be easier and faster to navigate. Considering that you often have to use this screen with limited time makes this a very welcome change. There are a couple of new features too. Weapons now show how much ammo they currently have, you can still find the key items by expanding the key item drop down section, and you can sort inventory items by category, allowing you to find specific items a fraction faster. The map is a tool that helps you navigate the labyrinth of the Ishimura. It shows you where you are, where you've been, and where you need to go next. The map in the first game is notoriously difficult to use. I originally thought this was a deliberate design choice to disorient you, hide secret rooms, and create a sense of panic, but apparently it's just bad design. According to the original game's UI designer, it was the reason that they added in the locator. They had tried a number of ideas to improve the usability of the map, but in the end they ran out of time, so the locator was added in as a workaround at the last minute. The map in the remake has been redesigned. It retains a similar appearance as the original, and although it doesn't look as futuristic, it is significantly more usable. This is an important change because backtracking and exploration are much more important and encouraged in the remake. I think adding in the Dead Space 2 locator so that you can track both primary and secondary objectives simultaneously would have really taken it to the next level, but it's hard to argue with the improvements made here. The mission UI's layout is very similar to the original game, although it includes new functionality. The journal has been moved down into a new footer section, and you can now see both primary and secondary objectives and choose which one to track. Side missions are a new feature in the remake, and along with the additional backtracking and interconnectedness of the Ishimura, making this UI more functional was a necessary upgrade. The database has seen the least amount of changes. It's almost identical, although the global improvements to contrast make the information here easier to read, including images that are of a higher resolution. Overall, the changes made to the rig's UI, combined with the global improvements to contrast, significantly improve usability while retaining the look and feel of the original. Most importantly though, making these screens easier to navigate hasn't reduced how stressful it can be to operate them while under threat. Another menu you'll need to interact with frequently is the store. The store allows you to purchase, sell, and store items. It also lets you change into any available suit you have. The old store has been completely thrown out, in favour of a design that's very similar to the store found in Dead Space 2, although it makes a number of improvements. In general, the design is cleaner, with less embellishment and more contrast. This allows information to be scanned faster, and it will be easier to use for players with low vision. I also like how items are now grouped with the price, so that you don't need to glance at the information panel to find the cost of items. The information panel takes up less room too, meaning it sits lower in the visual hierarchy and provides more space for store items to be displayed. The only thing that the new store keeps from the original design is the category tabs that include icons with labels. However, the save tab has been renamed as storage, which is more intuitive. I think leveraging the store from the sequel was a really clever way to keep this menu in universe while dramatically improving the UX. Okay, moving along. The workbench allows you to spend nodes on upgrading your suit and weapons. This UI could have very easily been incorporated into either the store or even the rig's holographic display, but it was deliberately designed as a separate station to emphasize Isaac's role as an engineer. 
Assembling and fixing things is part of his core skill set, and it makes sense that this sort of task would be done at a specialised workstation. The general layout of this UI has remained quite similar, with a few changes to accommodate the new options. The status module has been integrated into the suit's upgrade tree, rather than being a separate list item, and the suit has loads more stats to upgrade. This updated UI does a good job of accommodating the new upgrades, and it gives you a clear understanding of how you've spent your nodes. When highlighting an upgrade slot, you no longer get a description, except for the special upgrades. This information definitely felt superfluous in the OG UI, and removing it cleans up this screen a bit. I like how the upgrade bars for each stat at the bottom are colour-coded. This makes it easy to distinguish between each one. I think the vertical list in the original was a better arrangement, but with weapons having up to 9 upgrades to list, this would have taken up too much of the screen, so the new grid arrangement is a logical choice. Moving the images of the item being upgraded and the number of available nodes to the top of the screen and swapping their position also seems logical. It was probably necessary to free up a little more horizontal space at the bottom too. All in all, a few minor layout and design changes have dramatically increased the functionality and usability of this interface. The front end menu is the only interface in the game that isn't presented in the game world. The main reason for this is that it contains options that only make sense to the player. Ammo counters and inventories are things that Isaac would need to know, but volume and display settings aren't, so that's why a separate non-diegetic menu is needed. Apart from the additional options, these menus have remained largely the same. I think this is maybe the only area where the Remakes UI is not as clear as the original. Overall, the Remakes UI is cleaner and has more contrast, and I think adding descriptions to some of the more esoteric options was a smart choice. However, I think the on-off toggles are less intuitive. Sure, the inactive and active states are visually very different, but they lack the labels that the original game has, and this would require slightly more cognitive demand to use them. Simply adding the toggle state to the description might fix this. Obviously, it's not a big deal because you never have to operate this menu during gameplay, but I thought it was worth mentioning. I mentioned at the beginning how the various interfaces you find throughout the ship act as the Ishimura's voice. This is an area that has seen a lot of attention. Environmental storytelling is such a big component of the original game, and it's clear that they were limited with how far they could take it. The remake goes all out in this department. The number of non-interactive interfaces has increased massively. Not only that, there's heaps more detail and fidelity in them too, and the new lighting and reflective surfaces allows the ship to feel more alive than ever. Survival horror games are supposed to be stressful, and part of this is often caused by the need to interact with interfaces that are deliberately cumbersome to use. The remake manages to improve usability without losing this core interaction principle. It simply removes a lot of the unnecessary frustration that was in the original game. It's also great to see that so much work went into making the experience more accessible. This is ultimately a win for everybody because when you improve things like legibility and intuitiveness, this is something that all players will benefit from. I think the Dead Space remake is not only an excellent example of how to remake a classic game, but it also demonstrates just how far UI and UX design has come in the gaming space. Motive Studios have done an outstanding job here, and if you haven't played the remake yet, I strongly recommend doing so.